All right, going to hit you with some root bridge election process theory here, and then we'll do a walkthrough, and then we will see it in action. So plenty of reinforcement coming up here. Because the election, really, it's a simple process. Because each switch is going to read the root bridge bid information in an incoming BPDU and simply compares the incoming bid against its own. And it's either going to be higher or it's going to be lower. And if the incoming root bridge bid is lower than that of the receiving switch, the receiving switch says, hey, you know, wait a minute, the switch that sent this bid is actually the root. So not only am I going to start recognizing that switch is the root, I'm going to forward this BPDU to let other switches know about it. This is what we call a superior BPDU. If it comes in and it has a better bid, a lower bid, if you will, then we consider that to be a superior BPDU. Now, if the incoming bid is higher than that of the receiving switch, the recipient looks at it and says, hey, you know, nice hearing from you, but, you know, my bid is still better than this. My bid is lower. So, uh, you know, I'm still the root. Now, a BPDU that carries a non-winning bid, as like the one I just described, that's what we call an inferior BPDU. Sounds like kind of a harsh term, but that's the one we use. Now, this process will continue until every switch in the network agrees on exactly which switch is the root. And at this point, we've reached a stage of convergence. Sounds kind of deep, right? STP, well, it's converged, the term we've used before. And in STP talk, it's a fancy way of saying we all agree on who the root bridge is. And when STP has converged, every involved port on every switch is either going to be in forwarding mode or in blocking mode. And before we get to the lab work and the walkthrough, let's have a look at all of the STP port stages because we've talked about two. There are actually five. And, and the, the fifth one, if you will, the fifth beetle or whatever cliche you want to use there, it, it's, a, it, it's a state you actually will not see mentioned when we're running all of our labs. You'll see the other four. But the STP port state disabled. You will never see DIS next to a port in the output of show spanning VLAN, a command we're going to use often. Now, Cisco does consider this to be an official STP state, so we will as well. This is a port that has simply been administratively shut down. It's not forwarding frames, but you'll see that most of these stages, the, the port is not forwarding frames. It, this one, a disabled port, is not even running STP. Now, when STP puts a port into blocking mode, that port really can't do much of anything. There's no frame forwarding, no frame receiving, no dynamic learning of MAC addresses, right? If you're not receiving frames, then you're not building a MAC address table. About the only thing a blocked port can do is to accept BPDUs from neighboring switches because that helps that port realize, hey, maybe I need to start coming out of blocking mode. Now, here's what's going to look like, and again, plenty of lab work ahead where we'll see this on the live equipment, but I want you to see where this shows up. And show spanning VLAN 40, because we're running per VLAN spanning tree, each VLAN has its own instance of STP. And you can see there the interface, the role, we'll definitely talk more about that, but under status, once STP is converged, all you will see is FWD for forward, and or forwarding mode and BLK for blocking mode. That's it. But as far as those intermediate stages that I mentioned, when STP brings a port out of blocking mode, that port is not going to go just immediately to forwarding mode because that does invite switching loops. It raises the odds of switching loop forming. So what happens is first, when a port starts that transition from blocking to forwarding, it enters listening mode and that's going to be listed as LIS in show spanning VLAN. So the question is, the obvious question is listening for what? Well, a listening port is listening for BPDUs. Now a listening port can send BPDUs as well, which allows the port to participate in a root bridge election. Now what can a port in listening mode not do? It can't forward frames, it can't receive them, and as a result of that, the port itself cannot learn MAC addresses in a dynamic fashion. Now, as that transition continues, we've gone from blocking to listening to learning mode, LRN, and this is exactly how you'll see it in the output of show spanning VLAN. Now, a learning port 
is not yet forwarding frames, but it is learning MAC addresses. So we're getting somewhere now. It's learning MAC addresses dynamically, and it's adding them to the switch's MAC address table. A port in learning mode does continue to send and receive BPDUs. Finally, when all goes well, and it usually does, the port will go from learning to forwarding mode. Forwarding mode allows the port to forward and receive frames, send and receive BPDUs, and continue to learn MAC addresses, because pretty much do everything it wants to. Note that this is the only state where the port is actually forwarding frames, and that is forwarding mode. Now we're about to walk through a root bridge election on a three switch network and what we're going to do is take a look at the election from each switch's point of view. So this will reinforce the theory we've been going over and then we'll do a live lab as well. Quite a few of them actually to do with, deal with the root bridge election. In our walkthrough, each switch has the default priority 32768. The MAC address of each switch is the switch's number repeated 12 times. Again, through the magic of technology, all three switches are coming online at the same time so all three of them believe that they're the center of the universe, they're the root bridge, and all three of them get very busy announcing that fact. Now, each, since each switch believes that it's the root, all six ports in this example will go to the listening state, which allows it to hear BPDUs from other switches. Please ignore that in the paren because we just did go over those port states. I wanted to do that beforehand. Now, on your job, on your exam, dealing with production networks, you should be able to look at a diagram like the ones we're going to see in this section and be able to identify the route. We should be able to identify the ports that the non-root bridges will select as their root ports. We'll be able to identify the designated ports and we should be able to say how many ports will STP block once convergence is achieved. You got to watch this one because this is a little surprising, especially if this is the first time that you have seen STP. So let's go ahead and dive in here. And we're going to look at this election from Switch 1's point of view first. Switch 1 has a bid of 32768 and then all 1's for the MAC address. It's getting BPDUs from Switch 2 and Switch 3, but it's looking at both of them and saying, hey, you know, it's great to hear from you, but at the same time, my bid is lower than the bid that Switch 2 is sending me, than the one Switch 3 is sending me. So at this point, Switch 1 continues to say, I am the root. So any BPDUs it sends out will announce itself as the root. Switch 2 at the same time is going to be getting BPDUs from 1 and 3. And it's going to look at Switch 3's BPDU and say, hey, you know, my bid is lower than that. So, you know, no problem here. I am still the root. But the thing is, when that BPDU comes in from Switch 1, Switch 1, uh, excuse me, Switch 2 says, hey, you know, there's a, you know, a new king in town because this incoming bid is lower than my bid. So at this point, switch two would recognize switch one as the root. Now, switch three is about to get a massive inferiority complex because switch three is hearing from two different sources uh, lower bids. It's hearing a lower bid from switch two. It's hearing a lower bid from switch one. But the thing is, the BPDU with uh, Switch 1's bid, that's Switch 1's bid is the lowest of all. So Switch 3 is going to get both of these BPDUs and say, okay, you know, Switch 1, that's, that's the boss. That is the root. So just this quickly, because of the BPDU exchange that you would have if you brought all three switches online at once, they're going to read each other's bids inside these BPDUs, and finally Switch 1 would indeed be recognized as the root but the thing is the root bridge election you know we're not we're not electing a king for all time here this is a continual process so if another device comes online and says hey you know here's my bid well if it's a lower bid than the current root that new switch will indeed become the root because note here that the mac address of switch four following what we came up with is all fours but the priority is different. You gotta watch that on your exam. They're not gonna try to trick you with it, but we get so used to seeing that default priority that it's easy to not realize when the priority's been changed. So Switch 4's priority was set to 24568, giving it a bid of 24568 and then all fours. So Switch 4 comes online, sends that BPD out, and Switch 1 says, hey, 
there's another new king in town now because I'm hearing from a switch that has a lower bid, I will start recognizing the device with this particular bid as the root. So again, very important to note here because you know some things in Cisco Technologies we're gonna see later in the course, when a router gets chosen as you know an active router in HSRP and there are some other roles routers can take, that even when a device comes on later that should take over, it doesn't automatically take over. Well, in switching with STP and the root bridge election, switch four would automatically take over. It has the lowest bid and that is just that. Now, this is a great walkthrough of a network where all the switches come online at one time. But the thing is, when you and I, the network admins, visit a site, or even when we visit our lab, you know, that root bridge election's already taken place. So that's why I like to give you a walkthrough first, but what we're gonna do next is bring the live switches up where the root bridge election's already taken place. We're gonna spot winners, we're gonna spot losers, we're gonna see how STP handles ports, and that is all coming up next.